Okay, now we're going to find the definite integral. So that means that so if we have this function right here, y is equal to x, and here's 3, here's 7, we're finding the area underneath the curve from 3 to 7. So that's graphically, horrible graphic, but graphically what's going on. So now we no longer have to do the plus C because that's only when you do indefinite. So we can go ahead and get started. Uppercase F, and then remember when you integrate X, X to the first, add one, they add up. So you've got X squared over two, you can put that in parentheses if you want, vertical line, and you put the A value, the lower value, the lower bound would be the correct way to say that, upper bound, and then equals. And then where you how you find that area, you take F of B and you subtract F of A. And I always just do it underneath. And then when I'm done, the answer, whatever this answer is, I'll put back up there. So we've got 7 squared over 2, subtract. This is a pretty simple one. Well, that's 49, subtract 9. That's 40. 40 over 2 is 20. Um, And so if they're telling you to find area or volume, usually I want you um, to put... Uh, units squared, units cubed, but in this case, I'm just going to to leave it just like that. All right, let's do another one. All right, so we're here's a constant out front, so be careful with those. And then when we integrate, we're going to add. 1, so that's 4 thirds, so we end up multiplying by the reciprocal. And you, you could simplify that. In fact, when you do that, uh, just do it this way. 9 fourths, and then put that on the outside, so you're not having to multiply each time. Then just do f of b, or f of negative 2, subtract f of negative 6 inside here. So then it's 9 fourths. The only problem is don't forget to multiply the answer. Um, so it's, what do we get? x to the 4 thirds. So it's negative 2 to the 4 thirds, subtract negative 6 to the 4 thirds. All right, and then again, if you put in your calculator just like that, but I'm just going to uh, do that in my head. So negative 2 to the 4th is 16, um, and then the cube root of 16. So let's see what the other ones so the cube root of 16, well, it's 18 times 2. A 2 comes out. That's 2 cube root 2. So that's what this one equals, 2 cube root 2. And then we've got, there's not a cube root of negative 6. So we'll do uh, negative 6 to the third is negative 2, 16. Times 6 again. This becomes, yeah, this is where you, so subtract negative 1296, which is positive 1296, and then you're, you're going to take the cube root of that and then simplify. I'm going to put this on pause. Okay, I went ahead and finished simplifying. So negative 6 to the 4 thirds ended up sim simplifying to, and brought this subtract sign down. 6 to the cube root of 6. 
So then remember, we have this 9 fourths multiplying on the outside of all of that. So I rewrote it right there. And then 9 fourths times 2 is 9 halves because the 2 and the 4 cancel. Uh, this becomes 2. That cancels. And then 9 fourths times 6 is 27 over 2. And then because these two share the same denominator, that's how I rewrote it up here. So that's what that answer would be. So you have to work out a little bit, but it but it's doable. Let's see if there's another one. Yeah, let's go ahead and do this. So this one you should almost be able to do maybe um, from memory. I don't know. Remember when we say if you have y is equal to 1 over x, the derivative is negative 1 over x squared. Well, if you integrate negative 1 over x squared, then it goes back to 1 over x. So I think what's going to happen, or if not, you could call this g and this f and do it that way. But f of x becomes negative... 5 over x squared, and that is from negative 2 to negative 3. And this negative, this negative sign we can actually bring out in front so that when you're, in fact, we can bring out negative 5. I'll just do it that way. So when we do the f of negative 2 subtract f of negative 3, we're going to bring the negative 5 out in front. And then all we're integrating is one, uh, all we're working with is the 1 over x squared. So, so now we have 1 over negative 2 squared subtract 1 over negative 3 squared. So we have negative 5. 1 fourth subtract 1 ninth. Well, they need to have the same denominators. So I'm going to multiply this top and bottom by 9. Uh, so that becomes 9 over 36. Subtract 4 over 36. Well, 9 subtract 4. And again, multiplied by 5 is negative 5 times 5 over 36. So it looks like what we have is... Negative, twi negative 25 over 36. Ah, so this is interesting. This is one where, because that's x to the first power, I would leave it, but I'd bring out that negative 3 first. So that you can see that that's 1 over x dx. Because remember, the integral of 1 over x is ln of x. So it's the absolute value. And that is from negative 1 to negative 3. This is exactly why we need the absolute value. You can't take the ln of a negative number. And so the absolute value there means we're taking the ln of 1. So then we're going to have negative 3 times f of negative 1 subtract f of negative 3. So ln of absolute value of negative 1 subtract ln absolute value of negative 3. Well, the ln of negative 1, or absolute value, the absolute value of negative 1 is 1. ln of 1 is 0, and so the absolute value of negative 3 is 3. So that's negative ln of 3. Which is about, let's see, so negative ln of 3, it's about, roughly negative 1.0986. And I would go out to the 
fourth or fifth decimal place. All right, I think, yep, I'll save these for the next video.